Oh God, do I have three minutes? <laughs> I, I so meant to do a lot more. But here's what I want to introduce one more thing is that what we can do is we can take these and this is another graph that you can make is, again, I'm just taking one gene at a time. But what I can also do is I can take all these genes that go up. If we go down, let's just take the top, I don't know, let's say 200. So on my, so you're, you're basically at your, where you're tabulated, where you created your screen. What I want you to do is select MX1, go all the way down to 200, which should be given one, hit shift, select those. Well, actually, shit, we only got 10 minutes. Okay, let me, let's, let's not do that one. Oh, I've got some stream. Let's do it, please, let's do it. This is so much fun. Can we please do it? Okay, we can do it. All right. We're gonna Hold say, on, we're, we have, do we have people that need to leave on time? Well, they can leave. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> 10 more minutes of class left. Okay, yeah, we got we 10 more minutes. 12 minutes. Come on, let's do it. All right, let's do okay, it. Okay, go ahead. So I, I, I select these, right? So now we've, we've got the top 200 genes to change due to, due to infection. What we can also, we can do is open up your browser. And here's what I want you to do is just wherever your you know, browser is, I want you to search for, I want you to type in string and then maybe just hit protein, type in protein. What we're, I'm trying to get you to do is I'm, I'm gonna get you to this data set. What I want you to do is select string functional protein associated networks. If you don't, if you put string and then you don't put protein, you'll get like pictures of like string bikinis, <laughs> which are really bad when you're trying to teach a bunch of high school kids this stuff. And they're like, what? <laughs> it does get their attention. But anyway, so maybe it's just my browser. But anyway, we can, we can select this string. Let's select this. So this is a bioinformatic program to give us more information on these genes. You'll get this, this, this window will come up. What I want to do is I want to hit search. You'll get to this window here. This is protein by name, but what I want to search for is multiple proteins. So I select multiple proteins and then all I do is I put my cursor here and I hit control V, paste. That's the easiest way to do it. So I've pasted my genes in here. I go down and I want to select the organism. This is, if you look here, I mean, the, the ones they give you like right away are like homo sapiens and, you know, yeast. And what you want, to, instead of like trying to scroll down and find it, I want you to type in mus, then you can go mus. So type mus, mus twice. And what you really want is this mus musculus. That is the scientific name of mice. We're going to click on that. Hit select. And then all I'm going to do is hit search. And again, I have lots and lots of videos on string. If you have any difficulties, email me and I will send you a link to one of the videos that shows how to use this. String is an amazing program. <laughs> I love it because it actually does networking and there's very few, I don't know how many people out there use David. I'm just going to tell you right now. I think David is crap. <laughs> I'm like, I, I do not like that program at all. I don't think it's very valuable. Um, God, come on. I still got internet. What string does is it basically kind of does the same things as, as, as David does, but what it does is it connects the genes based on known connections between these, these genes. So you'll see lines. So what you're doing is you're building networks out of this. Oh, come on. <laughs> the server is busy. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're all hitting it at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. All right, hold on. Let me, let me try it one more time. Come on, there we go. Oh, that looks better. Okay, so now this second window is all it's doing is it's showing you what it recognizes. We had 200 query terms in here and it'll tell you how many it recognized, but uh, it recognized most of these, I believe. 
Um, now we, what we can do is now we can hit continue. So it's just showing you, hey, here's the genes and we hit continue. And what you should see is a nice, pre whoa. <laughs> You'll see a knot. And you know, honestly, this is, this is how you know all this stuff worked is that given the fact that we, we like, if we go down to analysis and you go, you can tell this just looks like a big knot and you can see MX1 right here. And we could find out, you can grab these, you can drag these, but we can see, do you have this MX? No, it's not, let me do it. You should be able to grab these. I don't know why it's not letting me. Maybe I'm using too much, you know, memory, but what you can do is drag these, but we can also, we can look down here on our analysis. Yeah, people are hitting this big time. This is really what I want to see, is I want to see that this connectivity, and that actually when this analysis opens up, what you'll be able to do is pick pathways, and it'll color it based on pathways. And what you'll find is most of this stuff is immune response. But there's also some very other interesting things going on in here. And that's another thing we could do is we could basically pull out this MX1 and find out what's, what is it interacting with. We can click on any of these interactions and find out more information about that. If my thing wasn't still trying to think. Oh man, that's terrible. Well, let me, let me open my other browser. So here is I have actually colored it and I think we can actually look at, we can drag some of these out. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, they are. Look at that. I love this. Like these are all the things that MX1 is binding to. And you can see is what I've done is I now I've colored these based on some of the functions down below. So if I look here, 109, it recognized 192 of our genes. Based on random chance, we would expect 223 connections or lines between those. What we got was 2,207. The odds of that happening are less than one times 10 to the negative 16. Again, this isn't random chance. What we have done is we, in this data set, we've pulled together. This is probably the inflammatory response to this virus. This is the true pathway that's going on. And, and again, what we've done is we colored it based on defense response to virus. You can see that there's way more than we would expect, you know, just based on random chance. This is the false discovery rate of, of the probability of that happening. We can color this by, you know, any, look at all the things that are overrepresented. And again, these are all pathways. These are things that you can get with David. But the nice thing about string is we are also looking at the networking. We go down here and some of the other ones, I've, cytokines, I, I told you were very important in that. And we, there's also actually antiviral defense and response to interferons. These are local clusters that string has developed. We can click on that. But again, we're coloring it based on what we want. We can see all this information. We can tell what MX2 is actually binding. We can actually double click on any of these and look up those, what those connections are. Maybe. Come on. Let me try one more. Can that data set be downloaded from Stringer or Stringer? Yep, totally. So that's what I do. And I wish I had more time is what I would do is I would show you is what you can do is you can download all these connections. We can download all this information under exports, all this information. And then what we can do is actually we can find those genes. What you can do is download this table and I can find those genes with the most connections so that it's not only what you're not looking I hate people that just go, oh, well, this is the most change with the biggest gene expression. This must be the most important. Not necessarily. And, and really what you're looking at is things that have more connections to other things on your list. And that's what I find very interesting. It's not only things that change the most, but also things that are connected to more other things on my list. Because that actually, you know, no gene operates by itself. Like I hate 
the term driver mutations. Please don't use that term. I know people do. But it, it's never just one gene. It's, it's genes like MX1 binding to all this other stuff and all these other things that are occurring. That's what you really want to get to. And the things that interact with more things on your list are probably more important. And again, the only way we got to this was this whole thing was based on 15 different studies using almost, you know, over 500 different lab animals, millions and millions of dollars of research gets us to this point right here. And you should see in the graph that I, I did on like, like you should see the things that go down. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Oops. You know, here's a graph of some of the things going down and you could see it's not quite the knot, but again, you could see like, you know, We've got catalase here. We've got this whole glutathione response here, this antioxidants. And you can see catalase is, has a known relationship to ACE2. So again, now you're getting, so these are the things probably the virus wants to shut down in order for it to, to be prosperous in the cell, right? And so these are the things that it's, it's trying to turn off. And you can see like this pond one, this is a crazy, you know, all kinds of stuff going on here. Maybe, oh well. But again, I, I like string. It gives you not only like biological categories, but it also, again, by graphing it out into this network form, we can see that, hey, I bet this thing is important because it seems to connect to some very important things. Not only does it connect to catalase, which connects to ACE2, but it connects to all this other stuff. And so this, maybe this is somehow driving all of this and maybe we want to target this. Um, I know I'm, I'm going over time. Does anyone need to leave?